a seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive, part 28. Refitting the boiler cladding, making the firebox cladding a better fit over the safety valve bushes, sealing the boiler barrel to the smoke box and modifying the length of the shut off tap handle. The silver stuff that you can see is thermal insulation. I've fitted this first and now I'm fitting the firebox cladding. The cladding on both the firebox and the main boiler barrel are in two parts. That's two parts for each area of the boiler. I've just fitted the firebox cladding and I'm using a stiff brush to press the firebox thermal lagging into position. The cladding on the firebox is held in position by two straps, one at the front and you can see part of this sticking up at the right hand side and then a large one at the back. When I removed this cladding I did notice that it wasn't a very good fit around the bushes so now is the time to put that right. I'm scratching the paint with a screwdriver and this is where I need to reprofile the hole to make it fit over the bush. I don't know what this brass bush is for in the cladding but when it was parted off during manufacture quite a sharp piece of metal was left sticking out of the centre. This serves no other purpose other than to scratch the paintwork so I've removed it using my Proxon angle grinder. I need to be very careful not to distort this cladding, so I can't really hold it anywhere other than in my hands on the bench. And once again, using my favourite tool of all time, an 80 grit flapper wheel fitted into a Proxon Mini Mott motor tool, I'm reshaping the hole in this cladding to fit around the bush. While I was doing this job, looking at the cladding, I realise I'm going to have to do something about the state of the paintwork. It's not very well keyed to the metal, and the primer isn't etching primer, it's ordinary car grey primer, and you can even remove it by using a fingernail, which is not really what you want. In this clip I've changed the tool to a drum sander. This is a little bit more aggressive. To make the hole in the cladding fit over the bush on the boiler, I need to elongate the hole slightly. You can clearly see that it's now oval. I'll correct this shortly. In the meantime, just look at this paintwork. I can't do anything with this. Luckily, a few hundred yards from my house, there is a company who do powder coating. But in this case, I do not need anything powder coating because powder coating paint doesn't stand the temperature. Even with the thermal insulation, this firebox gets very hot indeed. And today I'm going to return to the powder coating company and pick up four pieces of metal which will be completely devoid of paint. This is the lagging for the main boiler barrel. And once this is fitted to the barrel, two halves of the main barrel cladding are secure in place using boiler bands. I'm just trying this for size and it seems to be okay. Before fitting this lagging and the cladding on top, I need to do something. The smoke box of a steam locomotive needs to be a perfect fit onto the barrel of the boiler. The whole point of the smoke box is to create a vacuum. As the blast of steam goes up the chimney, either from the cylinders or from the blower, the vacuum in the smoke box is what draws the fire and makes it burn brightly. You have to think about making this seal. And this is a rare case where I'm using silicone rubber, heat resistant silicone rubber. When I fitted the boiler to the smoke box, I didn't put the sealant around the smoke box because that would be a problem. Not from a vacuum point of view, just if ever you wanted to remove the boiler, it would be so well stuck into the smoke box, I do think it would be a problem. That's why I'm doing it this way. I've just put a fillet of silicone rubber between the smoke box and the boiler barrel. Moving back to the firebox, I'm trying to think what this brass part is for, and I think I know. It's a spacer for the decorative boiler band that fits at the rear of the firebox. This boiler band is made from copper and it's shaped to look very decorative. The problem now is with the thickness of the cladding and this brass thing, the handle that I made for the shut-off valve on the turret is now too long and it needs shortening. It's a very simple job. I mark the position from the centre of the handle and then I part off two bits, one at each end. That's one end done, then I turn the part around in the chuck and remove the other end in the same way. A very simple job indeed. 
All I need to do now is round the end so it looks okay. I'm doing all this freehand and I need to get both ends of the handle the same size and shape. How do I manage to do this? It's called practice. The more you do it, the better you get at it. I round one end and then commit that to my memory, turn the part around in the chuck and round the other end to the same shape. This is where having a photographic memory is quite useful. I'm going to have to make a shim washer to make sure that this part sits in the right position once it's screwed fully home into the boiler bush. When this turret is finally finished, I need to make sure that the tap faces backwards. The valve is fitted to the turret using sealant, but this is insufficient. I'm also going to drill and thread the turret to take two stainless steel bolts, which will lock it permanently in the same position. By fitting the turret as you've just seen, I can estimate the thickness of washer that I'm going to need. And should I forget what thickness of washer I need, I will always have the video to look back on. I have a couple of copper washers, so I'm just going to try one of them and see where the turret ends up. Sometimes when doing jobs like this, you can get lucky and get it right first time, but not so in this case, I need a much thicker washer. Before I do this job for real, the cladding is going to need repainting and fitting in place. I'll do that over the next few days. But that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.